Shabbat Shalom Mishpaka. Shalom Aleichem. How's everyone doing? Tob? Good? Tob. Hallelujah. How's everyone's week been? Tob. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom to everyone who's joining us on YouTube, on our live stream. Um, from uh, uh, We're streaming here from UK. Uh, London and Shabbat Shalom to all those who have joined us on TikTok. We're really grateful for you to come and join us on this holy day, the most set apart day of the week. It's a given even unto the to the Nazarenes to keep in the spirit in Yehoshua and uh, who he said he is Adon, Hashabbat, Adon of the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Excellent. So please like, share and comment. Um, on our stream, this helps um, our posts and this helps our our stream go to wider audiences. And it we have been touching so many people, um, and we're so grateful that Yah has chosen us as a as a vessel, as a family to touch people. And we're going to continue on this mandate given to us by Yahweh Elohim, and uh, we were going to go forward as we are living in these last days. To teach the truth, the real word of Yah, the whole scriptures, not just a few portions of it, that um, people may experience freedom, people may experience deliverance, and people may endure to the end. Because the scripture says, if you endure to the end, ye shall be what? You shall be saved. Hallelujah. So this is about endurance. <coughs> this race and this journey we're on is about endurance. So it's not, it's like a marathon. Paul, Paul says that we've got to run the race that's marked out for us. It's not a sprint. Those are short-term. Uh, those are short-term things. We we have got a, a, a marathon to run, so we've got to run it a certain way. Hallelujah. Okay. Has said Shalom. Berkut wahaba ma'at el elion banu harwa kakudesh ha wa the barti atik malkisedek. Let me finish the whole thing. Yeah, I'll finish the whole thing, then you can interpret. Hallelujah. Lashinim Ashir Shabbati Yisrael Wale Goyim Ba Yehoshua Ha Netzari. Ba Hashem Yehoshua. Come, interpret it now. Great mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's interpret as a congregation. Come on. The Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, and what? And from the ancient order of Melchizedek to the 12 tribes of, of Israel and the Gentiles in Yehoshua the Nazarene. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So um, please, uh, as I said, like, share, and comment uh, on uh, YouTube and on um, TikTok. We really appreciate it. If you, um, oh, today is the last day now. So the, the basically I'm closing down the immersion registration. But anyone <coughs> looking to join our congregation for immersions, uh, today's the last day. If you want to join our congregation, obviously you're open. It's not dependent on immersions. I had a couple of questions come up this week. Can we only join uh, Beit Ali Himadar Elyon underneath the ancient order of Melchizedek if we get immersed under you only? It's not the case. Obviously, you can come and join um, us. And obviously, it's a good thing if I can have uh, you immersed uh, in the true names under the ancient order of Melchizedek. But that's not the requirement. But nevertheless, if you want to join us, um, it's uh, paleo hebrew 1981 at gmail.com. And... Uh, You'll be required to pray and maybe do some fastings to know the will of the Father. We just don't, uh, we draw people closer to Yah. That's this ministry. We draw people closer to Yah. We draw people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So, um, Yah is doing a great thing amongst us. Uh, uh, hopefully, you guys are starting to put into prayers the, the actions of last uh, week's sermons as we spoke about uh, the book of Acts <coughs> and how we will be re reliving the book of Acts in these last days. Hallelujah. Shall we say uh, tefillah Yahuwah and then shall we get into the study? Today I want to talk about the secret power of love from a Hebraic perspective, a Nazarene perspective. So let's uh, let's lift up some prayers. Mm. 
Ready? Hallelujah. All right. Abin Sheba Shemaim Yit Kodeshem Ka Tabu Makuteka Ye Esed at Zonka Ka Ashe Keba Shemaim Gamba Aret Tain Lanu et Lechem Zar Kanu Hayom Umekalanu et Kovetainu Kimoshiga Manaknu Makalnu Le Kayavainu Wa Altibiainu Lide Niseon Ela Hazilainu Minhara Kishal Kahi Hamalkut Wahagavora Wahatefira Le Olme Alamim Amen by Shem Yahushua. Hallelujah. So uh, obviously at the end of like the teaching last week, we started to pray for some people online. And so if you need any prayers, wait till the wait till <coughs> I come to the end of the sermon. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your prayer request in, in the comments, and then um then that's for the public when it comes to the Mishfakar, the congregation. Uh you can you send a message privately, and then we're gonna be praying after the, the teaching. But yeah, you can drop your prayer request in the comments and I'll have some of the Uziers um, pick up the prayer request and we're going to lift up some prayers for you all. Hallelujah. Yeah, somebody turned around on the comments here and I think I'm just going to address it quickly. This can't be Christianity. Exactly. This isn't Christianity. We are the Hebrew Nazarenes. We follow the Messiah. His name is Yehoshua HaMashiach or, or Yeshua in Aramaic. We don't we don't uh, follow the Christian side of things. We follow the whole Bible. Christianity follows a uh, small portion of the scriptures. We follow everything that was commanded by a blessed Messiah. And we're here to help you. We're not judging you through it or condemning you through it. But we're here to help you, to bring you into true salvation. Before you may not have known, that's fine. That's where grace kicks in. It makes up for the, what, what we don't know. But now we know we're not in ignorance. So the truth is being out there published by many people. But especially here at the ancient order of Melchizedek. We know... Um, uh, welcome also and give thanks unto the ancient Lord of Melchizedek, Aluf uh, El Zoha, Aluf Kohen El Zoha, who spent some time with me. He was teaching me some things this week, and I'm um, really grateful for um, him really helping me lay a foundation for this teaching. And my my, my beloved brother, Kohen El Jadai Malek, um, that we are doing a lot of work, a lot of work right now. So um, it's a critical time, and we're approaching uh, the new year soon uh, in, in March. So we've got a lot of things to be excited about, and you will all have a lot of things to be excited about. Hallelujah. Shall we get into the study? Let's go into the book of Revelation chapter 9. Then can we go into 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and then we can get to John 17. These are going to be the three, uh, three readings to start with. Yehovah bless you all. For everyone who's greeting me and saying shalom, you know, I just want to say shalom to you all. Yehovah bless you. Okay, let's go. From the top. Mm -hmm. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven mm -hmm. unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit. Yes. As the smoke of a great furnace. Mm. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, mm. and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, mm -hmm. neither any green thing, mm. neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Elohim in so, their so, so some people like to backbite and like to gossip. And it's like a sting of a scorpion. When someone when someone's gossiped about you or someone backbites about you, how do you all feel? Do you feel good? Do you feel positive? You feel bad. You feel, you feel like you've been stung, right? It hurts. Okay? What do you all think online? Uh, drop me a comment. How, how does it feel when you've been... Um, when you've been gossiped about or someone's backbiting you, what do you feel? feel? Let me know how you feel. It's good to understand. But it's like a sting of a scorpion, right? It's like a sting of a scorpion. And it's really interesting that these scorpions, they come out of what? <clears throat> they come out the bottomless pit. <laughs> So when someone's backbiting or someone's someone's uh, lying about you or accusing you, guess what? It's straight from the bottomless pit. Hallelujah. Okay, let's keep let's keep reading. They don't hurt the grass, so they they're not gonna hurt they're not gonna hurt where their field is. 
because he says they were they were they were they were told that they shouldn't hurt the grass of the earth, neither the green thing, neither the tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Elohim in their in their foreheads. So I'm speaking dualities here. So obviously, if you're sealed by Yah, guess what? The accusations, the lies, and the backbiting, it doesn't affect you. It doesn't hurt you. Meaning it doesn't, the, the weapons formed, you feel bad, but like it doesn't, you're not going to be overcome by it. That's the point I'm trying to make. Come on. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion mm -hmm. when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die. And death shall flee from them. Mm. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. Okay. Some some people are saying here, betrayal, it hurts. <clears throat> a lot of betrayal. Some people are saying like they feel that being stabbed deep in the heart, like a blade being twisted. Like, yeah, that's that. I mean, that's graphic, but that's true. Heartbreaking, <clears throat> painful. Come on. What verse are you on? You hold that? I'm on verse uh Verse 7. Uh-huh. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, mm -hmm. and their faces were as the faces of men. Mm. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as teeth of lions. Mm. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, mm. of many horses run into battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Mm. Stings in their tails. Mm -hmm. And their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. In the in the, in the Hebrew tongue, what's his name? Abaddon. So the the king, <clears throat> the king of the scorpions, which stings in their tails. The king over them is Abaddon. All right. Why don't we go to the next scripture? Second uh, Thessalonians 2, it's our page 750 mm -hmm. in this word. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Adonai, mm -hmm. the Hoshua HaMashiach, mm -hmm. and by our gathering together unto him, yes, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, mm. or be troubled, neither by ruach, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Mashiach is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let anyone deceive you. What do lies? What does backbiting? What does accusations? What do these things do? They deceive people. That's what they're designed for. So deception comes from the bottomless pit. Deception comes in the form of like some people think it's just like it can just be like a, a false prophet or a false teacher. But the biggest forms of, and, and it's true because it's rooted in lies, but the biggest forms of deception come through backbiting, gossip, accusations. False accusations, obviously. Come on. So let no man deceive you by any means. Come on. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Mm -hmm. And that man of sin be revealed. So the falling away is going to happen. So what we're going to see in the last days, love's going to grow cold. Deception's going to increase. False prophets are going to arise. So as, as, as false prophets arise, guess what? Love decreases. Why? Because of accusations, because of backbiting, because of gossip. We don't tolerate that in our Mishpaka. We don't tolerate it. Who was the first one to go around Yah and gossip? <laughs> yeah, Hasatan in the garden. When he went to, when he went to Hawa. Did you really say this? Are you sure? The eyes will be opened. He was the first one. So guess what? That's the father of lies. That's what the scripture says. He's a murderer from the beginning. So backbiting, ac accusations, false accusations, gossip. Ad so people just think you can just speak idly. But we've got to give an account for every word spoken. So guess what? These things are designed. These things are designed to kill Still and destroy. Do you know how um, some people get manifestations in their body when something's positive is happening, when something negative is happening? So if you 
if you get regular um, or if you've had low back problems, because I'll speak from a herbalist perspective, because like words have power, they have life and death in them. So I, I'll start teaching you all some of the things, some of the keys to look for in your body. And it may not be like a health issue. Like I'm talking about generally your health is good, not because like your back, you got bad back issues or anything like that. But let's say you randomly start getting back pain, especially lower back pain. That's cool. That's that's the spirit of backbiting. It's the spirit of accusation. What do they say? Someone's talking behind your what? Behind your back. There we go. Because it, it because English is a curse language. So you have to. It's a spell. They cast spells. That's why words are spells. This is why I have to be careful what we say. Very very important. Hallelujah. You learning something already? Cain. So we. So when you get lower back pain. That that means that you're being accused or somebody's gossiping about you, or somebody is lying about you. And remember, because it's a spirit, because it comes out of the mouth of a, of a of a temple, somebody's temple. But is it out of Yah's temple? The, the Ruach Hakodesh in that person, or is Abaddon in that person? Mm -hmm. Keep reading. So there's going to be a falling away. It's happening already. We're seeing the separation between the sheep and the goats, the wheat and the tares. The children of Abaddon and the children of who? Yahuwah. There is a separation happening. So as love grows cold dust, guess what? We see more fake news, don't we? Are you not seeing fake news all over the internet? And now like when they put their disclaimers at the bottom, like you see in some of these social media platforms, uh, community notes they call it, even they are found to be fake. But who's running these community notes? <coughs> <coughs> So there's fake news everywhere. And that's why I always encourage the Mishpaka. There's so many different teachings out there, so many different conspiracies out there. Like people come to me and say, Kohen, like we can't use the word Amen. It's the name of an Egyptian God. They took the word from us and they've used it. Does it mean it's not in the scriptures? So there's a lot of conspiracies out there. We've got to be clear. We've got to stay away from fake news. And we have to stay away from fake news when we meditate on the law day and night, as David said. Hallelujah, because that separates light from darkness. He's the light in the beginning. There's a separation between light and darkness only comes from Torah and following Torah in Yeshua HaMashiach. So, okay, okay should we keep reading? Okay. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Uh -huh. And that man of sin be revealed. The man of sin... The lawless one, the man of sin. Remember, sin is what? Breaking of what? The, law. the laws. Come on. That man of sin be revealed, mm -hmm. the son of Abaddon. The son of Abaddon. Abaddon means destruction. But I, Abaddon is also having the keys. He's, he, he's having the keys of the bottomless pit. So, th so those, th so those who who are growing cold in their love, those who lie, those who gossip, those who make false accusations. Guess, guess who's possessed their reins? Because they sting like a scorpion. Who's the king? The king's Abaddon. You think the bottomless pit's like some type of nice place to come out of? What did smoke like coming out like furnace? The bottomless pit. It's like people that the bottomless pit is likened to the toilet. So those of you that will randomly eat, you eat clean, everything's fine. And you know, there's some type of spiritual issues going on. And all of a sudden, like your bowels are loose. We're going to teach these things because you all need to understand you need to be free. Guess what? Someone's doing something. Someone's speaking negatively against you. And, and and there's a lot of people that have come to me, especially in the in the, in the congregation, and you know they feel something spiritual is going on, and I, I and they've showed they've told me certain circumstances, and I'll tell them, yeah, maybe somebody's speaking against you, maybe someone's praying against you. Why don't you start asking the Father to read it and just bind what's being said, and and guess what, the the loose motions in the stool stop. All of a sudden. There's no such thing as a coincidence. So we're teaching you these things because the body, the spirit, the soul is all connected. But how much more responsibility do we have as children of the light to speak life? This is why we in temperance, 
you have to cast your burdens. If you don't cast your burdens to Yah, you're gonna start speaking, you're gonna speak start speaking death over yourself and over other people. And maybe somebody may deserve to hear it, but we apply grace. Say, hold on, let me take a step back. I'm I'm meant to be different from the rest of the world. Okay, so the man of sin be revealed, the son of Abaddon. <coughs> Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, mm -hmm. so that he as Elohim sitteth in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. So guess what? The spirit of lies, the spirit of false accusation, the spirit of gossiping, guess what? It dethrones Yar in your life. So Abaddon now takes your possession. Abaddon takes possession of your Ayin Achad. Your first eye, where Yah sits. That's where he sits. Abaddon takes possession of it. And now you think you're hearing from the Most High. You think you're in the prophetic. But guess what? It's lies and it's gossips and it's the sting. Now, now you've got the scorpion spirit in you. And you go around stinging everybody, but you're protecting everyone in your life. So you think you're in, you think you're in the will of the Father. But you're going out of your way and you think you're doing Yah's will. So now, now Abaddon's possessed you, remember? So now you become a false prophet. You don't even know it. And the Ruach departs. The Ruach HaKodesh departs. I've had many testimonies of people coming and saying, oh, we've spoken to people that, that have left the Mishvaka and they come back and say that, that the Ruach is never the same again. Because there's one thing when people go, but there's another thing when people try to destroy along the way. So, I, so if someone's trying to destroy your life, this is going to really edify you today. And we got to repent first. Everything that we've said in jest, everything that we said in ignorance, everything that we've said when the flesh has been involved. This is why Paul made you do it. Circumcise your heart. Circumcise your heart. Purify yourself before Yah. Come, let's go to the prayer of Yehoshua, the priestly prayer of Yehoshua. Johan 17, the book of John, the Gospel of John 17. Remember that the moment you start getting involved in gossip, you start getting involved in false accusations, you start backbiting, you're dethroning Yah from your life. And you, not, you start to think that Yah is speaking to you, but guess what? Abaddon's possessed you. Abaddon's your king now. Let's go. Let's go to the book of John 17, okay? We're going to go to... This is Yehoshua's prayer. This is a very, very beautiful priestly pray, prayer. Why don't we go from... Um, hmm. It's a very specific part uh, I want to pray. Yeah, let's go from uh, let's go from verse ten, Torah, and you're gonna read until verse twelve. <coughs> so, the Book of John, your canon, chapter seventeen, verse ten, mm -hmm. the sixth man in his word, mm -hmm. and all mine are thine, mm -hmm. and thine are mine, mm -hmm. and I am glorified in them, and now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. These are in the world. Come on. And I come to thee. Holy Father, mm -hmm. keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Kodesh Abba. Keep them. Set apart, set apart Father, keep them. You've given them to me. Come on. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Mm -hmm. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. Mm -hmm. And I've none eaten. of them is lost. None of them is lost because the name of Yah keeps us. Mm -hmm. The name of Yah keeps us. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's why like people come to us and say, well, we want to call him what we want. You can call it, you, but you guys are a cult for calling him by his true name. No, we want to be kept by Yah and Yehoshua. We call upon his name, so we should be what? Saved. Come on. But the son of Abaddon, that the scripture might be fulfilled. 
Yeah, so you've uh, you, none of them is lost, but the son of Abaddon. Abaddon is what the this the son of destruction. That the scripture might be fulfilled. This is speaking of Judas. Judas was a false accuser, and he was a liar, and he was a gossip, <coughs> all for silver, all for a bit of change. And guess what? Money, gossip, backbiting, false accusations all come hand in hand. So now you're not just dealing with Abaddon, you're dealing with the spirit behind Mammon too, behind un unrighteous money. So you combine all of, the, all of these things together, guess what? Your cells now, we spoke about this the other day, your cells contain these evil spirits, parasites. That's why you've got to keep your temple clean. That's why you eat. That's why you got to make sure that the food you eat is clean. That's why you got to make sure you got to be careful what you watch. You got to be careful what you take in, what you listen to, because it's these things that cause you to start stumbling with gossip and oh, I'm unhappy about this. I'm unhappy about that. So Abaddon, Abaddon is something we need to be careful of. And Abaddon <laughs> is the king and the principality over gossip. The man of sin, right? The son of Abaddon. So this is the, the man of sin. Remember, all sin is ascribed to who? What does the book of Enoch tell us? All sin is ascribed to Azazel. All sin is ascribed to, uh, to Azazel. So Sister Maya says, Judas did something strange for a piece of change. That's how deceptive this spirit is. To, to you in the truth and to us in the truth, it's just a piece of change. But... The mind through gossip and backbiting and accusations and false accusations become so twisted it became everything to him. Because remember now, Yaz left. <clears throat> what happened at the table at Passover? Satan entered into the heart of, of Judas. So the rock, the, the rock's not going to dwell anymore. Yeah, go ahead. Has the uh... <coughs> If someone, if somebody has got a, a habit of lying, and lying can come in different formats, it can come in, de in denial. Denial is something. There's, there's a, there's a lie called denial. If you deny the truth about yourself, you're lying to yourself. So these spirits can get attached. It's outwardly lying. That this, this lie we're talking about is literally the fruit, but it's the worst. Look. At, so what was the first? What was the first lie? Satan lied. He thought it was more beautiful than yeah. That's the first lie. He was in denial. He denied. He was in denial. He said, what? Because I'm beautiful. <laughs> so he wanted to become above. Above the throne of Yah. So when you can't look at yourself and be honest about yourself, you're lying. But this is where we have the law of grace. We... And this is where, like, you know, especially with me and the Mishfaka, will help you come into that position. We don't beat people, beat people into that position, but we kind of push you into that position where you honestly look in the mirror and analyzing yourself and saying, what's the condition of my heart? Dawid. This is what people say. People like to hate on that, especially like the Christians will hate on Dawid. He did this. He did that. But he said, creating me a clean heart. He confessed it. He took the rebuke of the prophet. That's what Yah is looking for. He's looking for meekness. He's looking for a people ready to change, to go on a pathway of righteousness. Dawid was on a pathway of righteousness as an example to us. When you read the Psalms, you can really feel his flesh crying out to Yah, help me. He's a man of flesh. So we have an example in Dawid in how we can cry to Yah to make sure we don't trip up. So when you lie about yourself, you're going to lie about other people too. Let's go to Proverbs 6.16 and 1 Timothy 4, please. These six things does Yehovah hate. Mm -hmm. These Yay. six things does Yehovah hate. Come on. Yea, seven are an abomination <coughs> unto him. Okay. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Okay, so a proud look. So pride comes in first. Yeah, not able to humble yourselves. Then what? A lying tongue. And I, when I say yourselves, I'm speak, I include, we include each other in it. We include myself in it. A lying tongue. 
Come on, what's up to a lying tongue? And hands that shed innocent blood. Look at the process. It starts with pride, then it goes to the lie, then after the lie, you look to shed innocent <laughs> blood. So that's why your back that's why your lower backs are hurting up and playing up. And in Yehoshua's name, all those who've got lower back issues, I pray it be cast out today. And may every lie and accusation against you, Bashem Yehoshua, may it be cast off you. Amen. So, so, so lies are basically false accusations, right? <laughs> lies are false accusations. This is what we're dealing with today. The secret power of love. Let's go to the book of 1 John and let's read chapter 4, 6 to 8. Torah. I've told you the problem. Now let's go. Let's let's understand power, the power of love. Yeah, one one John chapter four, uh, verses six to eight. Yeah, told her. Timothy chapter 4 for some reason. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Timothy chapter 4 for some reason. No, you didn't have it for some reason. I told you actually oh. uh, to read. Yeah. Oh. We can go there. Go to it. You did, I told you to go there. I just oh. forgot. <laughs> Let's oh. go there. 1 Timothy 4. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 1 Timothy 4. I was getting 7 5 1 in his word. Uh, now the Ruach speaketh expressly mm -hmm. that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Mm, some shall depart from the faith. Somebody said to me that like you can't lose your salvation. So what's Paul saying here? I some I gather my comments and my interactions on social media and I, and I bring them out because this is what the nation needs. We're trying to build the nation of Israel. So we I gather the comments and say, fine, this is what the people believe. This is what they think. So in the last days, what? Some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the faith. So they had faith, now they're departing from it. Free will. Come on. Giving heed. To seducing spirits. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Abaddon. Abaddon. Come on. And doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. Abaddon. It's okay to gossip. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, looking at me when I gossip. <laughs> I'm spending. I'm. I'm spending all my time with Yar alone, and and and. Uh, but I'm gonna gossip about this person. But yeah, it's, it, there's no problem with that. This is how. This is how deep the deception goes. And we don't stand for it. We don't stand for it at all. No, because we're dealing with Abaddon. We're dealing with we're dealing with a principality here. Come on. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. What? Speaking lies in hypocrisy. They depart from the faith, being seduced by spirit and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. So when you see false accusations, when you see lies, when you see backbiting, guess what? They are departing from the faith. You may think that they're born from above. You may think that they're from the Mishfaka, the family. They might be part of the congregation, but they're, they're departing from the faith if they're not repenting. Guess what? The scripture says in Revelation 22, 14 and 15. He said, what he said? I'm the Aleph the Tor, the first that I was speaking in the end. He, he keep, keep, if you keep his commandments, you get the tree of life. But outside of what? He says, uh, he says dogs and stuff like that. What do he say? Lie. Those who love to make a lie. Those who love to accuse, those who love to backbite, those who are those who are making lies, the tree of life isn't for you. So you may be trying, uh, you may be trying a lot of herbal remedies to get better, but you're up, you're operating in lies and in gossip. Guess what? It doesn't work. Did you notice that? There's the, the, some of the people that I've had to deal with when they were lying and gossiping, they were taking herbal remedies for inflammation in their body because it comes back to you because that's this, these evil spirits ain't loyal. <laughs> They'll start stabbing you, but you in the back because the scripture says, "Whatever a man shall sow, he shall reap." So I've dealt with people and I've helped people get set free from um, lies and gossiping and backbiting. And guess what? Their bodies return to normal again. The herbs started working. So if you're a liar, you're gossiping. If you're backbiting and you're taking herbs and you're saying, "Well, the herbs don't work," then you're denying, yeah. Or the guy who prescribed the herbs, they don't work. My body hurts. Or oh, guess what? Guess what? You've you've got you your body pains are there for a reason because of the spirit of lies and accusation. But we operate in love and we operate in forgiveness. That's why we're bringing this teaching up to make sure that we don't get trapped by Abaddon and we don't get depart from the faith in the last days. Come on, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Yes, 
Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron because they're angry. So they will do everything to destroy you. Hallelujah. But we have Yah who's greater than all of these things. And that's the message of hope we're bringing today. I know we've gone down this path and it sounds, and it's serious because we're exposing the spirit at play. And guess what? Some people may turn around and start confessing, saying, no, I've been like this. I don't want to be like this. We, we, we want deliverance from these things. That's why we're here today. No, no one's getting cast away from anything. We're here to help you. If this, if this troubles you, if this plagues you, we're here to help you. We're here to help you through it. When um, uh, me, Alif Kohen, and, um, and, and Kohen Jediah, we, and Kohen El Jediah, we did, um, we, did a, we, did a, we did a court, we did a court session. Um, ordained by nature in order to make about somebody who's stealing money uh, and and making lies um, from the ministry. Okay, you know what's really interesting? Someone someone who used to be someone who used to be part of us. They turned around. Do you know what their feedback was? I enjoyed that a bit too much, and they smiled. The spirit of gossip and the spirit of lies. And yeah, just yeah, yeah, remove them after that. As soon as they said that, yeah, remove them from the midst of us because it spreads like fire. That was a, that was not a pleasurable experience. That experience was very tough. It was hurtful because we love the brother. But guess what? Somebody enjoyed that. Said that I enjoyed that a bit too much. Because because it's something to gossip and to talk about, isn't it? It's disgusting. It's disgusting. But that's what we're finding that these people are seduced by the spear of Abaddon in these last days. Hallelujah. Should we go to 1 John 4, 6 to 8? I wanted to show that people depart from the one of the major ways you can lose your salvation is through gossip, <coughs> through backbiting, and through false accusations. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, page 772 in his word. We are of Elohim. Uh -huh. He that knoweth Elohim hears us. Mm -hmm. He that is not of Elohim, hear not us. Mm -hmm. Hereby know we the Ruach of truth. Yes. And the Ruach of error. Mm -hmm. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of Elohim. Love is of Elohim. So love one another. Is gossiping love? No. Is backbiting love? Is, is accusing love? Come on. And everyone that love is born of Elohim mm -hmm. and knoweth Elohim. Mm -hmm. He that loveth not knoweth not Elohim. Right. For Elohim is love. Elohim is what? Elohim is love. Elohim is love. Mm -hmm. Elohim is love. Aleph, Lamed, Hey, Yod, Mim. Elohim is love. And love is Ahaba. Ahaba. Okay, so guess what? Elohim is love. That means what? Elohim is defined in Hebrew as powers. So the powers, we're talking about the entire Godhead is, is, is just love. Elohim is love. So when you start seeing hatred, gossiping, backbiting, yeah, it's not in it. It can only be the devil. It can only be the I can only be Abaddon. Uh, Hallelujah, uh, brother, brother, Ak Ak Eliezer is like, yeah, it's all good until correction comes. <laughs> That's an excellent comment. And it's always fine. Everyone's great. Oh, this is amazing. We love this ministry. We love this congregation. And then when correction comes, like, yeah, I don't think Yah wants me to be here anymore. I'm being led elsewhere <laughs> because you've been corrected. But guess what? Love, Yah loves those he chastises. So when we chastise and, and when we when we rebuke correctly, when we do it in, in the spirit of love, guess what? It's because we it's because we love you, because we don't want to see your soul be destroyed. Yeah, that's beautiful. So uh, Elohim is love. Uh, so we have Aleph, Lamed, He, Yod, Mim. So we have the strong leader, the Aleph. Yeah, we have Lamed, the shepherd. We have He, the breath of life. Yod, the spark of life. And meme is like a representation of water, right? 
Somebody says here, uh, can this prevent a congregation from growing? Well, only Yah can grow a congregation. But what the really interesting comment is, these the comment is that these things are sent to destroy. And when Yah is really building a congregation, what does he do? He prunes. He cuts away moaners. He cuts away um, backbiters, and he cuts away um, he cuts away false accusers. And what does he do then? He regrows it. When the children of Israel were moaning, murmuring, complaining, gossiping about Moses, that's what they said. We can hear from Yah too. We don't need Moshe. When they did all of these things, guess what? Yah just they just died. They died in the wilderness, and Yah raised up another another generation, and they took the land. The Joshua's and the Caleb's. So it can prevent, but when 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 the leadership is into prayer, guess what? Yah just removes those who complain. He removes the gossipers. He does it for you when you when we're humble enough to acknowledge it, and then he prunes, and then it regrows. That's just a cycle. That's our experience. That's it. that's what we say. So Aleph. Strong leader, Lame, uh, sh uh, the shepherd is, is, is Lamed. Hey, is the breath of life. Yod, the spark of life. Mem, water. So when we put this together, what do we get? The all-powerful leader. Remember, Elohim is powers. The all-powerful leader, Lamed. The all-powerful Aleph, leader. Okay, the leader is what? The shepherd, the Lamed. Gives life through his breath. Hey. And creates life. Yod. From above the waters, the heavens. So the all-powerful leader who gives life through his breath and creates life from the waters, Elohim is love. So now when we've got love as a definition, Ahaba, what's contained in love? Love is an energy, it's a frequency. Love is Yah as well. So Yah is spirit, right? So in modern terms, they call it energy, but Yah is spirit. So when we're talking about the spirit of love, we're talking about Elohim. So what's in love? There's power in love. That's why, that's why. Men and women got a, got a love according to the image of Yah. What does the scripture say? You are Elohim. Yah said we're made in his image. So if we're made in his image, then he says, in, I think it's Psalm 82, he says, you are Elohim. Then Yahushua quotes it. He says, the scripture says you're Elohim. So guess what? If Yah is love, are we not meant to be loved too? He said you're made in his image. Elohim is love, but we're also going to be Elohim too. So we're going to be we're going to be beaming love. We're going to have the frequency and the energy of love coming out of us. But that's why Abaddon comes with lies, hypocrisy. He comes with he comes with gossip. So we don't become in the image of Yah. So that's why if you look at Satan when he went in the garden, he went to remove the image of Yah from Adam and from Hawa by removing love from them. Because if you love me, you'll be obedient to my commandments. That's what the scripture says. Hallelujah. So what's in what's in Elohim? We've described he's a powerful leader. He gives life through his breath. He creates life, which is his hand, his works from the heavens. So love, when we're defining love uh, with, with the concept of Elohim, we have love is powerful. So men and women, you've got to love in your power. Guess what? Leadership. L love is lo love is leadership. Guess what? Love is in breath. Love is in oxygen. So the more oxygen you have in your blood, the healthier you're going to be. It's literally his breath in our body. Guess what? When there's less oxygen, what happens? Our frequency lowers. And the, when the oxygen gets less and less and less, what happens? We get diseased. We get diseased. So our body, is, is, it, it, there's a reduction in love in our body. This is We're talking about the body now and linking it. What does Paul say? May like your bowels be full of love. So when you're oxygen rich in your body and you understand breathing exercises, there's ways we breathe, deep breathing, because now they stopped us breathing from our nose. People are breathing from their mouth. But we're going to breathe. When you breathe correctly, guess what happens? The, the air and the oxygen goes into your stomach where it's 70% of your immune system. So that's why snakes try to what? When they try to choke you, they cut off your breath, right? And that's what gossip does. Gossip just doesn't backbite you. It also chokes you. So the spirit leaves. Abaddon comes. And now you're sick. And your immune system fails. Now I'm not saying people who've got immune system failure are um, gossipers or backbites. Don't misquote me at all. But there's a link between it for some people. So when you're, when you're operating in creative power, you're operating in love. So love has creating power in it. Lo love doesn't break something down. Love builds up. So when you're talking about the spirit of prophecy, it builds up the body. It doesn't break the body down. 
Hallelujah. You are learning something? One, one, yeah, you got a question? Lakamia, yeah. Can you operate on the Lakers' leadership? Yeah. Yeah. How did Yehoshua look after 1 John 4, 9 to 12? We're going to answer it now. <laughs> yeah, it's literally the next, uh, the, the following verses answer your question. Continuing from verse 9. In this was manifested the love of Elohim towards us. Because that Elohim sent his only begotten son yes. into the world. He sent his only begotten son into this world. That's leadership. He knew we we're going to fall. We're short of his glory. He's only begotten. He's the only, he's the only thing that came out of Yah. In the beginning, Elohim created Aleph Tor. So he came out of Yah. Then he gave his son. He didn't give an angel. Did he give an angel? He could have given, but what did he do? He gave his only begotten son to some. So Yehoshua literally came out of the father in the beginning. We, we revealed this mystery in Hebrew. And he comes out of the father. So he's then he gives it to us as a sacrifice. That's leadership. Leadership and love is sacrifice. You're sacrificial for the will of the Father. You don't sacrifice. Your, you don't sacrifice for your own self. You sacrifice for Yah. Yeah, keep reading. I'll keep that. Mm -hmm. That we might live through Him. Mm -hmm. That we may what? Live through Him. So, so love is going to bring life. Love and leadership is sacrifice, and that sacrifice brings life. It doesn't bring death. Yes, it brings death, but it's going to bring life afterwards. When I mean it doesn't bring death, it doesn't lower your frequency, it doesn't know who you are. There has to be a death in order to bring life. So sacrifice is obviously going to bring death, but that death has to bring life. That means it's going to be done in Yah. Come on. Verse 10. Herein is love. Not that we love Elohim, but that he loved us mm -hmm. and sent his son to the propitiation for our sins. Yep. To be a sacrifice for our sins. Mm -hmm. Beloved, if Elohim so loved us, mm -hmm. we ought also to love one another. Yes, hallelujah. On to verse 12. No man has seen Elohim uh -huh. at any time. Uh -huh. If we love one another, Elohim dwelleth in us. If we love one another, Elohim dwells in us. No one's seen Elohim at any time, but if we have been made in his image, they are meant to see Elohim through us because we've got love in us. Can you see? But guess what? If, you, if there's accusation, backbiting, and gossip, Elohim ain't even there because he doesn't even dwell. He doesn't even dwell. I quote Mary saying, uh, Marie saying, the balance of the tongue. Shalom, Sister Hukwami, all blessings. Yeah, so um, it's important that we have the balance of the tongue. Hallelujah. We're having someone saying there, Sister Maya, I'm convicted. Praise Yah for the scriptures and the teachings. Hallelujah. Okay, brother. Let's go to Ephesians 5 2. And then let's go to John 15, uh, verses 12 and 13. And then I'm going to pose a question to you all. I'm seeing some messages and comments. You want to be part of the congregation, our ministry. Paleo Hebrew 1981 at gmail.com, or you can send me a message if you're on my social media, and uh, we'll talk about that. Remember, you just, you just, when you come in, like you want to come in, you're going to be doing some prayers, you're going to be asking the Father for His will, because this is how we, this is how we do we draw people close to the Messiah. Come on, let's go for it. And walk in love as Mashiach also has loved us. Mm -hmm. And has given himself for us mm -hmm. an offering and a sacrifice to right. Elohim for a sweet smelling savor. So what is so Elohim is love, but so Elohim is giving us an example of love to be what sacrifice. If you're not sacrificial and gift giving, guess what? You're not. You don't have Elohim dwelling in you. If it's a burden to make sacrifices to Yah, if it's a burden to gift one another something, Elohim isn't dwelling in you. Hebrew culture is sacrificing and gift giving. So there's a new teaching out there that fasting, fasting is not a requirement. <laughs> Isn't fasting sacrifice? You don't have to fast. What, what's it? What did you call him the other day? That that Christian pastor, Mike Todd. Uh, Mike Odd. Mike Odd. Who's there? Your Hurib calls him Mike Odd. He says you don't need to fast for the uh, in, for the duration of your salvation. You're going to be fine. 
that that means you know you don't want to make sacrifices But but we have Romans, Sister Cindy says here in the comments, Romans 12. Yeah. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. We just want to omit chapter 12. <laughs> We're just going to do away with the book of Romans and just say, yeah. yeah. And in the book of Hebrews, you know, we've got to, we've got to make sacrifices. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, John 15, 12 and 13, Torah. We just read that, right? We read Ephesians, we read Ephesians, yeah. So John 15, yep, 12 and 13, that's page 619 is word. Mm -hmm. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. Greater love hath no man than this, Yes. that a man lay down his life for his friends. Mm -hmm. Ye are my friends, and if ye do whatsoever I command you, henceforth, I call you not servants, but the servant knoweth not what his Adon doeth. Okay, that's enough. Up to verse 13. So, okay. great. read it again, verse 12 and 13. Toda. This is my commandment, that ye love one another mm -hmm. as I have loved you. Right, because Elohim's love. You're going to be made in his image. You're going to be a person of love. Come on. Greater love, uh -huh. no man than this, that a man lay down his life. For his There's friends. no greater love than a man laying down his life for his friends. So it's got to be sacrificial. If you're sacrificial, you know that love is dwelling in you. If you're not sacrificial, you got to increase love. Guess what? Increase it. So why was the gift of love given to us? 1 Corinthians 13, 13. It's, love is the most accurate representation, right? Of Yah that we can be. As I said to you before, like, you know, we are meant to be Elohim, right? So we're meant to basically saying you're meant to be love. Elohim is love. You are Elohim. We are meant to be love. So why why, why was the gift of love given to us? Mm -hmm. Wrong, 1 Corinthians 13, verse mm -hmm. 13, page mm -hmm. 729 in his word. Mm -hmm. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three... But the greatest of these is charity. Is it, yeah, so the gift of love was given to us. Yeah, charity is basically love. Ahaba, the gift of love was given to us so we can be his image and we can represent his love on this earth. Be a light. Light is a frequency. Love is a frequency. So the frequency of love helps us to emit light. It helps us to emit whose light? Yehoshua's light. There's two lights. There's the dark light, the light of Abaddon. Then there's the light of Yehoshua. The light of Yehoshua is based on love. The light of Abaddon is based on accusation, gossip, and backbiting. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's look at the word. Uh, <clears throat> let's look at the word love, Ahaba. Okay, I'm going to just bring up my screen in a moment. Aleph, hey, we have the bait, and then we have the hey. I'm just going to bring up my screen for you all to see. We're going to do a bit of a longer study today because what I'm going to reveal to you is going to blow your mind. <laughs> it's fine. You're watching my stream on your phone. You're fine. Uh, this is a beautiful comment by Ark Stefan. Uh, sunlight releases oxytocin. Cain. Therefore, the Torah is the light and the light releases oxytocin as well. The Torah is love towards Yahweh. Beautiful. That's the love hormone, oxytocin. Okay, and that was beautiful, Aki. It always got a gem there. So uh, I want to present, uh, I just want to, uh, yeah. Because we're talking about sacrifice, right? We're going to show it in, we're going to show it in Hebrew. Can you guys see it? Okay. 
You guys can see it better now, right? Yeah, hallelujah. All right, so the, for those on TikTok, your better experience is going to be on YouTube for this part. <laughs> so we have on the screen, we have we have the we have re reading from right to left. Okay, um, we have here Aleph, Hey, Beit, Hey. So Ahaba. Okay. Okay. So what do we have here? Let's do some gematria. Aleph is one. Hey is five. Bait is two, and hey is five. What do we have? Hmm? Thirteen. We have the number thirteen, and then we can break that down to the number four, right? Okay. When we go to the original pictograph, we have that's the letter mem. Can you see? It's not come up yet. Is it delayed? Ah, there we go. Can you see? We have the letter Mem, and then guess what? We have Dalet. Can you guys see that? Okay. okay. So we're gonna we're gonna write here Mem, and then we're gonna write here Dalet. This is in the pictograph format. Does that make sense? Mem, that what's mem? Water. Water. Cane, and what's dalet? Door. It's like a door or a dimension, right? So, when we have mem, we can use it as water. We can use it as blood, right? Because the higher content of blood is what water. So mem is a representation of blood, and look at the shape of the dalet. Does that not look like the Ark of the Covenant? Okay. So what is Ahabba? The blood of the covenant. Hallelujah. The blood of the covenant. Love is sacrifice. Hallelujah. You like that? Hallelujah. Praise Yah. That was just a little bit. We got we got a long way to go. <laughs> I got some things to show you today. It, yeah, somebody said it looks like the Ark. Exactly. So when we're thinking about love, when we're thinking about it Hebraically, we have what? We have the blood of of the covenant, which we, uh, which we, there's in in John ten fifteen, it speaks about the blood of the covenant. So we have Aleph, which is so we have um, when we're talking about um, love, we have Ahaba, we have the Aleph, we have the Hay, we have the we have the Bait, and we have the Hay. So Aleph is a representation of the Father. He's a strong leader. The leader of the house is the Father, right? That's why they want to remove you. Remove the Father from the house. Through, system, through, the, through the political world and through the system, guess what? There's an absence of love. Of course, we have grace to make these things up, but that's why people hate spiritual authority. They hate spiritual authority because that's where love comes down from. There's an order to all things. There's an order to all things. So the father is the one who's going to bring the love into the family. And then he gives it to his wife. Guess what? And the wife has her own feminine energy, and then she builds the home. A wise woman builds a house. A foolish one tears it down. You can't build a you can't build a home unless what you've got love. So that the love is transferred from the father, son, and the spirit unto unto the, to the head of the house, or onto the head of of the congregation, and he puts it into the wife, or he puts it out into the congregation. Then the congregation are going to build the house, and the wife's going to build the house for the family. That that's the different elements of love that come in, masculine and feminine. So we have the father, Aleph, we have He, Ahabba, Ha, the breath, Bait. Bait is also a representative of son. Bane. So when we say Ba, we see when we say the, the letter Bait, we have the representation of the son, which is the house, right? Which is the house. He's the, he he said he said that he's the temple. So we have Aleph, He. So Aleph the father, He the breath, Bait the son, and He the breath again. So what's love? So we, we I'm giving you the keys for this. What's love? Love is sacrifice. Love is power. Love is leadership. Yeah? Love is, I'm showing you what we're meant to be love. We're in his image. So love is the father sending his breath to his only begotten son. Remember when he came out of the of the when he came out of the waters? I'm well pleased with him. Why? Because he's obedient. So Yehoshua demonstrated his love to Yah. He's pleased with him. Yah is demonstrating his love, saying, Now have my full spirit.
That's why he's Elohim in the flesh. Because the full spirit of Yah came into him from that day. Elohim in the flesh. So the non-Messianics get tripped up because it's like it's too spiritual for them. How can there's only one savior? Yeah, Yah is the savior. Yah put his entire spirit in Yahushua. He's the savior. <laughs> That's what it is, right? So then um, so love is the father sending his breath to his only begotten son. And then what did the only begotten son do? He gave his flesh that we may have his divine breath. There's a double breath there. So we can see in we find we, when we're talking about breath, we're talking about life. Kai, we're talking about life. So when we when we are operating in love, we have to have a knowledge that we're sacrificial. We have to have a knowledge there's power in us. There's leadership in us and different leadership for men, different leadership for women. It's not the same. It can't be the same. So they mix all the roles up. Now they're not mixing the roles up. Now they're saying everything's one, everything's the same. Some people misquote, and this is where it gets dangerous. There's no difference between a man and a woman uh, in, in the kingdom. Yes, for salvation, because they quote, there's no difference between male and female. But now if you misquote that, now you're going to become like these, uh, what do they call it? Um, I always think of the right word. Um, 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 Non-binary, gender fluid, and uh, what do they call it? Pronouns. Now you're bringing pronouns into the faith. When it comes to salvation, there's no difference between a man and a woman. Because it's only the blood of the lamb, love. But obviously in the kingdom, there's a difference. But now when you turn around and say there's no reason for it, and you have a lot of women out there thinking they can preach now, they can teach over men. And have their own ministries over men. Guess what? It, you, you're just gender fluid now. Because you're taking the role of a man. Gender fluid. So now you're now, now you're part of that uh, um, transformation agenda. Just spiritually. Oof, we're really learning something. Yes. You were just on that about the women. I feel like I see a lot of that, like especially on social media. Mm -hmm. Like these women pastors and they always like kind of preach a word and mm -hmm. justify why it's right for women to preach. Yeah. But then you kind of see other women as well who are just kind of like teaching or encouraging in the word or mind. Is there a difference? Yeah, like obviously there was women who did evangelized and they assisted but they came underneath male headship they came underneath the priesthood <coughs> obviously you've got to go to share the word we're talking about teaching doctrines over that, that and that that's when you start getting into saying well that's love comes from the father from a masculine and feminine way but it comes upon the man for the man to to walk as that leader as that shepherd and it comes upon the woman differently to build right so it's different it's different but it comes from the it comes from one source because yeah it's everything does that make sense? Yeah. So this is so what what's the what is the gematria for love for Ahaba? 13. Guess what? How do you say my father in Hebrew? Abba. Abba. Abba's father. My father, Abi. Aleph, Beit, Yud. 13. So he's love, right? Or our father's meant to be a representation of love. Guess what? Echad. Echad. Echad means unity, one and oneness. 13. Aleph, het, dalet. So when there's unity, when there's oneness, guess what? He said, me and the father are one. Me and the father are love. That's what you're saying. <laughs> when there's oneness, there's love. When there's unity, there's love. So... When somebody tries to destroy relationships through gossiping, accusations, and backbiting, there's no love there. They think, they're now so deceived, they think they love, I'm loving them, I'm helping them, I'm helping them escape something. Or like, you know, I'm, I'm gossiping and backbiting about somebody is the absence of love. But guess what? Unity, oneness is love. Bahag. So, so kag is the word for feast. So bahag is literally to say, like, into the feasts. Guess what? Each of the feasts, we have Peshach, yeah, we have we have Matzah, Shebuot, we have Yom Teruah, we have um we have um uh, Yom Kippur, we we have um uh, Sukkot, we have Hanukkah, and we have Purim, right? Each of these feasts are a representation of the marriage covenant we have with the we have with Yehoshua, and marriage is meant to be based on love. 
1 Corinthians 13 defines it. We're going to go into that in part two. Today's not about that. Uh, uh, Ak Stefan says also the 12 disciples and Yehoshua is 13. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was beautiful. Yep. Corinthians 13 as well. Yeah. The chapter 13. Hallelujah. So guess what? So when we say Abi, my father, that means love. When we say um, Echad, when there's unity, oneness, guess what? It's love. Cords of love, binding us together, cords of love. Right? And when we say into the feast, guess what? Love. Because it's marriage covenant. So this is the experience of love we get. We are meant to experience love through Father, through our Father in heaven and through fatherhood on this earth, which is why they want to get rid of it. And, and we experience love through unity and oneness and through the feasts. This is the highest way we can we can we can experience it. So now we've got this far. What is the what is the opposite of love from what we've uh, what what we've dis discussed? We've been dis we've been using this word a lot. Hmm? Um, yeah, hate is hate is hatred is part of it. We're talking about what? We're talking about gossiping. Backbiting, lies. What else? Accusation. accusation. Excellent. Let's look at the word for accusation in Hebrew. We're going to post this on our stream. It's going to be strong 7855. I'm going to put this on the screen for you all to see. Can you all see that on the screen? The word, the word for, um, the word for accusation. One of the words for accusation in Hebrew is sitna. Sitna. Okay. That's the sheen. Okay, that's the sheen. The tet, the noon, and the hay. We're going to do the gematria and that in a minute, okay? So we have the, we have the sheen, tet, noon, and the hay. I'm just going to highlight that for people to see. So accusation, okay? And guess, guess what the root word for sitna is? Hmm. Satan, hmm. which literally means the, the what to resist, to accuse. Okay, let's go to Revelation, the book of Revelation. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, mm -hmm. Now is come salvation mm -hmm. and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim mm -hmm. and, the power of, and the power of his Mashiach. Mm -hmm. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. The accuser of our brethren is cast down. Uh-huh, come on. Which accused them before our Elohim which, day and night. Which accused them before our Elohim day and night. So Elohim is love and the demonic powers like Satan obviously are what? Accusers. Accusers. Liars. Remember accusing is lying, right? False accusing is lying. So we have the sheen, which represents fire or cutting or to destroy. We have um, the letter uh, tet, which represents... Um, <clears throat> let me get the strongs up for them if everyone can see it. We have the letter Tet. So the first time we see the letter Tet in the Hebrews in the book of Genesis when everything is good, Tob. So it can represent the letter good or it, the shape of the Tet is also like a womb. All right? Because it's the ninth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, nine months in the womb, okay? So uh, then we have Noon, which represents seed. And then we have the hay, which represents like breath or vapor. So when we say sitna, accusation, this is what accusation is designed for. You're ready to hear it? Accusation is 
something that will destroy you by fire or inflammation. Remember the back pain, inflammation, mm -hmm. destruction by fire. That what is good from the womb, which is a seed, turn to vapor. Guess what? So we we are we are meant to be good, right? When Yah created, he's meant to be like this is good. He's my image, right? She's my image. This is good. So when what is the what is the purpose of accusation? Is to literally turn Yah's seed into vapor, into nothing. Accusation. So accusation contains power because if you look at the sheen, it's fire. It's destroying. It cuts. So it's literally meant to destroy what comes out the womb. What comes out the womb? Mankind. Mankind comes out the womb. So accusations are there to destroy mankind, which is the seed, into a vapor, into nothing. So you don't have the breath of life anymore in you. What happens when you don't have the breath of life? You die, right? You give up your spirit, right? What did we read in Revelation 12.10? And I heard a loud voice saying uh -huh. in heaven, now is come salvation uh -huh. and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren mm -hmm. is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. Uh, day and night. This is really interesting. Let's do some gematria for Sitna. Day, I want you to think of day and night. <coughs> Satan is there accusing day and night. On the screen. Let's uh, present the window. All right, let's go. Can you see? Let me make the screen bigger for you guys here. You can see, right? Excellent. All right. Can we do the gematria for that? 300 plus 50. Say it louder. There's <laughs> a guy just went for it. Sorry. No, good. It's good. What is it? Three, six, four. Three, six, three hundred and sixty-four. All right. Guess what? Let's do six plus four. Ten plus three. Duality. Love is thirteen. Accusation is thirteen. Whoa! You think that was whoa? <laughs> Duality. What did he say? I made the male and female. I made beasts clean and unclean. Duality, <coughs> balance, <laughs> good and evil, positive and negative. Yes, the scales. Guess what? So, so guess what? Accusation equals thirteen. So does love. Guess what? Let me tell you something else now. What? We'll get there. <laughs> That's excellent. You're you're rolling. We're gonna get there. That's the key. That's the key. So guess what? Accusation is always looking to attack love. And love is always going to overcome accusation. So what does it say? Satan is accusing day and night before the throne. How many days in the calendar? 360. How many days in the Neil calendar? 360 and the four the equinoxes is all the four the four days of separation. Three hundred and sixty-four sitna. Three hundred nine fifty-five <coughs> day and night. He's accusing every single day. Satan's accusing you. So the Enoch calendar is true, right? So they gave us a three six five, but it's three hundred and sixty-four days in the Enoch calendar. Day and night, Satan's accusing you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because guess what? Whilst he's accusing you, we have victory. Whilst there's an accusation going on, we have some victory, <coughs> which we want to get into. So 364 accusations, one for every day of the year, day and night, day and night. <laughs> any comments online, any comments um, in, the, uh, in the room? Remember, that, remember the commandments, positive and negative. You shall do, you shall. If you do this, it's good. If you you shall not do, yeah. Positive, negative. There's dualities. Okay. Everyone, good. No comments. Any questions? It's sense, like it's really... Yeah, it's, it's hitting you right. How deep? How deep it is. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All right. Guess what? Why does Yah allow accusations in our life then? <clears throat> 
I know some of you've been praying this. Why are you allowing this in my life? Why did you allow that? Why does Yah love accusations in your life? That's the that is actually the question that we're teaching on. Rhetorical question. <laughs> Rhetorical question. <laughs> but I want you to think about it, and you're right to think about it. I want you all to think about it. Why does Yah allow accusation in your life? Okay, what's interesting? What it's what, what what did a coat tell us earlier? She was saying that like Ahaba like, has the gematria value of what? Thirteen. So when we double thirteen, what do we get? Twenty six. 26 is the gematria of Yah's name. Yod, hey, wa, hey. Hallelujah. You know what's really interesting? Can we get two, two, two kings, two, nine to 12 up? You know what's really, really interesting? In a, let, Ahaba, Aleph, hey, bait, hey. Yeah, two kings. Chapter two kings. Uh, sorry, two kings, chapter two, nine to 12. So guess what? Yod he wa he, alef he, bet he. What's the pattern you noticed? Hmm? What's the pattern you noticed? Yod he wa he, Yahweh, and then love is a haba. Alef he, bet he. He's, he. He's the pattern, right? Excellent. Hallelujah. So you see in love the breath of life twice. You see in Yah the breath of love twice. Okay, let's get a precept for that. Okay, so, um, Second Kings, mm -hmm. uh, two, um, nine to twelve. Yes, as uh, page one nine four in his word, and it came to pass when they were gone over that Eliyahu mm -hmm. said unto Elisha, mm -hmm. "Ask what I shall do for thee mm -hmm. before I be taken away from mm -hmm. thee." Mm -hmm. And Elisha said, "I pray thee, let a double portion of thy ruach be upon me." Double portion of your spirit be upon me. Is not the spirit, the ruach, is that not the hay, the breath of life? Let there be a double portion of your spirit upon my life. That's what he's asking for. Come on. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. if thou see me mm -hmm. when I am taken from thee, mm -hmm. it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass. As they still went on and mm -hmm. talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire mm -hmm. and horses of fire and parted them asunder. Mm -hmm. And Eliyahu went up by a whirlwind into Ye heaven. Hallelujah. And Elisha <laughs> saw it and he cried, My father, my father. My father, my father. Come on. The chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Ta-da. So we know, El we know Elisha got the double portion, right? But yeah, he got a double portion. What did he? What did he? The double portion is the breath, right? Yod hey wa hey, right? But what about the love aspect of it? Because we're saying that ya ya is love. Elohim Elohim is love, right? So we've got ahaba the double hey, the double breath of life, and then we have the then we have yod hey wa hey, the double portion of his breath. Guess what? What did what what did Elisha cry out? My father, my father. Nope. Abi Abi. Abi is what? Aleph, Bait, Yod. What's the what's the what's the gamacha? Aleph is one, Bait is two, Yod is ten. Hmm? Thirteen. How many times did he say it? Twenty-six. <laughs> he called out to Yah in love twice and got a double portion. So guess what accusate why does Yah allow accusation in your life? Some people are saying to be refined by fire. Some people are saying that he wants to test our faith. Yah, now hear this. You can clip it as well. Yah allows accusation because he wants to give you double portion justice in your life. Yah allows accusation because he wants to give you double portion in your life. You want to know? You, should we go through the scriptures to prove that? So we got the double portion of his breath, right? Ahaba and Yahuwah. We saw that double portion came upon Elisha. Through uh, remember what yeah when um, in English it says this though. Remember Yehoshua's on, Yehoshua's on the 
when he's being crucified and he gives about to give up his ruach, what does he say? My L, my L. Okay, L is Aleph Lamed. So 1 and 30. What's 1 and 30? 1 plus 30. 31. My L, my L. So what's 31 times 2? 62. Switch 62 around. 26. Yod, hey, wah, hey. My, my, my L, my L. Double portion. What did Yehoshua always go around saying? Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Double portion. He was always being accused, but he said, Amen, Amen, I tell you. We're going to get into, uh, we're going we're to get into that because Yehoshua, we, we need to talk about Yehoshua now, right? I'm going to bring something up now. <clears throat> I want to share the screen. <coughs> Double for your trouble, man. We're gonna get we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into it, Mishvaka. Okay, can you see the screen? Okay. Okay, so this is how you spell Yehoshua's name in Hebrew, okay? Let me write it. Okay. So we have Yod, 10. Hey, 5. We have the Wa, 6. Okay, your calculator is ready. Sheen is 300. And Ayin is what? 70. Okay. Can someone do the math for me? Huh? 300 plus 70 plus 10 plus 5 plus 6. 391? Okay, what's 9 plus 1? Plus 3? Elohim is love. Ahaba. Mm, they can't see it on the screen, they can see it now. Ahaba is 13. So Yehoshua, is Yehoshua and who, so Yehoshua came out the father, right? 26. That's the double portion, the father and the son. <coughs> Hallelujah. Are you enjoying it? You see, we put all our teachings. So today, again, somebody came to me and they said to me, because uh, I, I, I did a short yesterday that why you shouldn't use Christ. Yeah, because Christ comes from Christus, which is a Greek and Roman God. But also, if you look at Sanskrit and the linguistics of Sanskrit, Christus is another way of saying Krishna. That's where they got it from, man. The Greek, the, the, the Sanskrit was way before the Greeks. So they turned around and said to me, you know the law, but you're so far from him. Everything we teach about is Yehoshua. Everything we te teach about is him We're not far from him We just want to give him respect So now when you say Yehoshua You're saying love When you say Jesus You can't say love You can't You can't When you say when you say Jesus Jesus Whichever you want to say Is just a name We're using numbers to show you That his name means love Yehoshua equals love Sacrifice Lay your life down for one another Love one another Because he's speaking about himself Hallelujah. You like it? And again, it's the blood of the covenant, right? If you think about it, 13, 13 and 4. Love, yeah? The blood of the covenant. The mem, the blood, dalet, the covenant. He's the blood of the he gave his blood for the covenant. That's love. So now so we have our bridegroom who loves us. 13. Any questions? Any comments? Yes, yeah, go for it, Kashtia. It just makes me think, like, you know, like, anything that negative happens, mm -hmm. so, like, you know, you hear, I don't know, someone's been fighting or what, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, yeah, just that, how low you can feel, mm -hmm. and it makes me think, like, actually, if we really experience or seek out Yehoshua's love more often, how much more of an impact that can have on us? Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah, exactly. So guess what? Satan is accusing you and me day and night, right? 364. And that equals 13. So who's he accusing us before? Yehoshua, the high priest. So guess what? Let's go to Proverbs 10, 12. Proverbs 10, 12. Remember, he's the firstborn of all creation. Colossians 1, 15. Genesis 1. In the beginning, what? Is the Aleph Tor. The Aleph, the Tor. Aleph is the father, Tor is the son. Double portion. The father and the son are your double portion of love. Because he says, in my, I come in my father's name. I come in the name of 13 because people got to understand. And guess what they say? 13's unlucky, right? That's what they tell you in the world. 13's unlucky. Now you know why they tell you 13's unlucky. Because they want to move you away from Yehoshua HaNasuri HaMashiach. Proverbs 10, 12. You got an accuser accusing you every day of the Enoch calendar, 364. And he's accusing you to Yehoshua. What's Yehoshua doing? Come on. Proverbs 10. Verse 12, okay. 2 2 in his word. Mm -hmm. Hatred stirreth up stripes, mm -hmm. but love covereth all sins. So Satan hates, he causes strife through accusations, he accuses before the throne. And what does Yahushua say? Love covers sins. What's sin? Sin is breaking of the Torah. <coughs> what are one what are one of the what are one of the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not what? Bear false witness. Bear false witness. You shall lie. Don't lie. You should not lie. Lying is sin. It's breaking of the law. And accusations are lies, obviously. So think, think, think about it very, very carefully. The accusation is 13 and the love is 13. Right? So the accuser is accusing us before the throne every day. And guess what? Yehoshua himself is covering us with his love. Love covers sin. So love covers those who are lying against us. If somebody is accusing you, you gotta you gotta love them. That's why he said love, because we're being accused by the by by the devil. Remember, Sitna, he's accusing us, and in order to in order to get a double portion, we gotta love. So Yah allows double Yah allows accusation in our lives because he wants to give us double portion. In order to activate that double portion, we gotta love. We gotta love because we're in his image. If you're not in, if, if you don't love, you're not his image, you're gonna miss out on the double portion. You're just being accused for nothing. So don't mind if people accuse you. If someone accuses you, they say double portion. You remember that uh, that gospel song? Everything is double, double. <laughs> <laughs> double, double, double. You don't know it? Why don't we play it? <laughs> why, 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 don't we, why don't we play it? So we're gonna play a song from YouTube. <laughs> We're gonna play a song. Everything is double double, right? And this song is just for for um for educational purposes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Play for too long, yeah. Huh? License music. <laughs> All right, let's let's leave it for now. There, we're gonna play it. But anyway, some of you may know it, the gospel song. Um, everything is double double. So let, so we're now gonna work. Uh, yeah, somebody, some people know it, they they contact us. <coughs> I won't sing it for you. Well, that's fine. So love covers. Uh, love covers all sin. So this is what we need to be. Let's let's look at um how Yah gives back double. Let's go to Revelation eighteen six, Isaiah sixty one seven, Job forty two ten, Toda. Someone said T.D. Jakes has a song, Double Doubles. I don't even know that one, man. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, reward her even as she rewarded you. Reward her even as she has rewarded you. And double unto her double according to her work. Yeah, so this is the this is the the judgment according to um according to Babylon. This is Revelation eighteen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the cup which she has filled, yeah, filled to her double. Double. Can you see? So, so for those of you 
2 Peter 3 9, what does it say? That Yah is not slack concerning his promise. Luke 18, don't give up going to the judge. Don't give up going to the judge. For those of you who are being accused day and night, I just want to give you a message. Don't give up on Yah. It may be taking a bit of time in your mind, but Yah is not slow or slack concerning the promise. He will bring his judgment in his time, but when he brings it, he'll bring it double. Because that's how Yah operates. So be patient. Don't give up on him at all. Okay? He is going to repay double for every accusation. And unto you, it's meant to be a double portion. But you got to love. you got to love. Let's go to Isaiah 61.7. And if you can open up uh, um, Sirach 20.10 and Sirach 26.1. Isaiah 61.7, mm -hmm. page 362 as well. Mm -hmm. For your shame, ye shall have double. For your shame, you shall have double. What does the devil try to do? Condemnation and shame through accusation. So they make lies about you. They accuse you because they want to bring you shame. But Yah sees that shame. Why is he allowing the accusation? Because he's preparing a double portion of his blessing. Your job is to love. Guess what? If you start being, if you start accusing and you've got accusations in your life, guess what? The devil just becomes your father. That's why you've got to crucify the flesh. Come on. For your shame, you shall have what? Double mm -hmm. and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Hallelujah! They shall possess the double. This is your double portion blessing. Now, some, some, uh, so, so the church will say to you, if you give seventy-seven dollars, or they'll say thirteen. You after watching this, they'll say you're gonna get double back. No. <laughs> <coughs> Let's go to Job forty-two ten. What 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 happened in Job one? Satan came with his angels and did what? What did he do? Accusing. He was accusing. He came to accuse. Said you made a hedge around him. That's why he worships you. Accusation. There's some beautiful, uh, beautiful comments. Uh, Brother Bill saying, praise El Elyon, the Most High. We are married on the 13th. Born on the 13th. That's your double portion. Hallelujah. I think Sister Marie... Uh, uh, his Isha said the same thing. 13 is my double portion, my birth date, my marriage date. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. This is great. So let's go to Job 42.10. So Satan starts with accusation. What does Yah end with? Because Yah has the final say. Job 42 verse 10. Okay, 279 in his word. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Yahuwah turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, Yahuwah gave Job twice Think about much. it. Think about it. Yahuwah turned his captivity so accusations bind. Accusations come out in the form of curses and they attack your spiritual and your physical health. So Yahuwah turned his captivity. What did he do? How did Job counteract the accusations in his life? He prayed for his friends. He loved them. Love covers sins because his sins were his friends were accusing him too. <laughs> and then what did Yah do? Read it again without my interruption. And Yahweh turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Mm -hmm. Also, Yahweh gave Job twice as much as he had before. Hallelujah! He got twice as much as he had before. Mm -hmm. So Yah allows accusation in your life because He wants to give you a double portion. In order to activate that double portion, guess what? You got to love. You gotta, you gotta, you, he's not gonna operate outside of love because he has love. Yeah, don't operate outside of love because he's so we gotta, we can't operate outside of love. So if you want a double portion blessing, guess what? You're gonna have to love, you're gonna have to stop hating, you're gonna have to stop backbiting, you're gonna have to stop making false accusations. And to all those who make those false accusations, we love you, it's good. We love you and we pray for you and we desire for your repentance and we desire that Abaddon comes out of you and we're happy to pray for those things too. Let's go to um, Sirach 20.10 and Sirach 26.1. There is a gift that shall not profit thee, and there is a gift whose recompense is double. There's a gift that doesn't profit, and there's a gift that there's a recompense that's double. Hebrew culture is gift given and sacrifice. Just because a church robbed you of your tithes and robbed you of your offerings, it doesn't mean that the Hebrews will do the same thing. Just because the church has mistaught fasting, it doesn't mean the Hebrew is going to teach you the wrong thing about fasting. There is a gift that gives double. 
when you're sacrificial, when you've got love in your life and you're giving love, and I'm talking about with each other, when you're loving one another, gifting one another, like my my gift to the to, to the mishpacha is the, the teaching and the prayers and the intercessions, and whenever anybody needs help, we help people. Like we have an orphanage, we have a prison ministry. That's the gift. That's the gift we're giving out. Guess what? Double portion. You want double portion? You got to put the work in, <laughs> and the work is founded on love. Sirach twenty six one. Sirach twenty six one, mm -hmm. page five five three in his word. Blessed is the man that have a virtuous wife. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. Blessed is your Hoshua that has a virtuous bride. Mm. Come on. For the number of his days mm -hmm. shall be double. The number of his days shall be double. But guess what, women, if you're virtuous. You're full of life. And if you're full of life, you're going to be full of love. And that your husband will have double. So you can increase the lifespan of your husband if you're virtuous. So they try to remove they try to remove the virtuous woman, don't they? Proverbs 31. The virtuous woman. So they remove they remove virtue from society and, and men are dying quicker now. And it doesn't always mean men are physically dying quicker, but they're spiritually dying quicker. They're emotionally dying quicker. What the, the highest suicide rates is among men or women. There you go. Lack of love. Lack of love. So there's a responsibility. There's a responsibility to love for men and there's a responsibility to love for women. Virtue and men lead in men in leadership. Being righteous shepherds. Who else was accused in the Bible, in the scriptures, sorry? Yosef. Yosef, Joseph. Joseph's brothers accused him. What happened? He ruled over them in the end. So he, Joseph was accused. He got sold into slavery. He ruled over them. Was What was Joseph's portion given to the tribes? Ephraim and Manasseh, double portion. Ephraim was also given double portion of land. Guess what? Guess what the portion? Guess what the portion is of of Israel, Judah and Ephraim. Go to Zechariah nine twelve and one Timothy five seventeen also. So Judah and Ephraim, the two sticks coming together, the double portion, showing the love of the father and the son. <coughs> We're coming to the end. Hope you're all enjoying it. Hananiah, Cain. Abraham was also accused. Guess what? The book of Yasher teaches us that Abraham was accused by Satan. And what did Abraham end up with? Yitzchak and Yishmael, double portion. He got the double portion of Yitzchak and Yishmael. We have somebody uh, somebody here saying Jesus is most definitely God. So yeah, just so there's no misunderstanding, obviously he's Elohim in the flesh. We're just not going to use pagan terms, terms of Baal like Jesus. We use Yeshua or Yehoshua, his proper terms, and he is Elohim in the flesh, obviously. <laughs> obviously we say this, and we say this week after week. I just wanted to say it because there's a lot of newcomers here, and I don't want them to get confused. Come, we come to the end of the study. I want to. I, I want. I want to read Zechariah nine twelve and one Timothy five seventeen. Torah. <clears throat> Zechariah nine verse twelve, mm -hmm. page four five three in his word. Mm -hmm. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Come on. Even today, do I declare mm -hmm. that I will render double unto thee? I will render double to those who've been prisoners. Ac accusations imprison you. Joseph was falsely accused by his brothers. He was in prison. Yah gave him double for his trouble. Come on. When I have bent Yehuda for me, mm -hmm. filled the bow of Ephraim. De Yehuda and Ephraim. <laughs> there we go. Yehuda and Ephraim, the two tribes representing the double portion of Israel and salvation to the whole world through Yeshua HaMashiach. 1 Timothy 5.17 Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Let the elders that rule well, what? 
be counted worthy of double honor. Be honor. counted worthy of double honor. Hallelujah. <laughs> so why does Yah allow accusations in our life? It's because he wants to give us a double portion of blessing. And the only way to activate that double portion of blessing is to respond to accusations, backbiting and gossip through the power and activating the power of love. Ahaba. Bashem Yehoshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Amen. You enjoy it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise Yah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We should sing that song now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a worship, a worship team can start. Everything is double double. <laughs> Hallelujah. Todaraba Yahawa Elahini. Thank you very much, Yahawa Elahim. Asher Natanan Hakode Shabbat for giving us this holy Shabbat. Bashem Yehoshua Hadatri in Yehoshua the Nazarene. Um, amen. Amen. Uh, so if you enjoyed this study, please like, share, comment. Uh, if you would like to um hold on one second. If you would if you would like to join our congregation. Um, please uh, send me an email, paleohebrew1981 at gmail.com. If you would like to uh, support our ministry with tithes and offerings, we have an orphanage, we have a prison ministry. I travel around the world immersing, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Ruach. Uh, please send us uh, your donations and offerings. We are uh, in Cash App, dollar paleohebrew26, or PayPal is um, at paleohebrew. So we really appreciate uh, all the offerings and the tithes that you give to the ministry. It goes on to worthy causes. I will be in Uganda in a few weeks. I'll be visiting and ministering in 12 prisons. I'll also um, I'll also take with me, um, well, we'll go and buy in, in Uganda, soap, salt, women's sanitary, men's sanitary, stuff like um, we introduced razors into the Ugandan prisons like 10, 15 years ago. They used to share razors before them and disease was high. So when we started to introduce razors, which doesn't cost that much, guess what? The disease level stopped. So, and women, women sanitary stuff as well. So like, these are the kind of things that we take in some prisons are on mountains, as we say, so we've got to take salt because they're <laughs> at a high place, they need it. So like we do different things in different prisons, but we're going to minister the name of the father, the son, the true names and Yah will, Yah moves mightily with signs, wonders and miracles. So, that's really important. And then I will be in Texas in uh, in April after Peshat. And um, we are going to be having immersions. We're expecting a gathering of around 60 people for immersions, prayer ministry, breaking um, strongholds and curses. I'll be teaching multiple times across one of the weekends, 19th to the 21st. We have some of the Mishpaka coming from the UK. So it's going to be an amazing time. So I'm really looking forward to meeting a lot of you there that, that, that have been in communication with me. So Yahweh bless you. I think if you're if you want to get your body right before the Most High, the ancient priestly uh, detox course that I run is on demand. You don't have to wait for month to month. Email me paleohebrew1981 um, at gmail.com. And if you have any other issues with your health, I can do separate consultations and um, I can design specific programs for you um, to help you. Uh, we have um, the books that we read. We do. We teach Hebrew. If you're interested in learning Hebrew, send me an email. Kohen Jedi L. We're lining up people for a class as well, um, especially for Beit Elihim Hadar Elion, our congregation. So um, there will be lessons to teach you and to get you closer to Yah. So Hebrew language is very important, and and this is the book for Hebrew 101 for the first class. This is all Kohen Jedi's work. Kohen L's work. Enoch one into Enoch. If you're in the US, uh, we'll send you the link. If you're in the UK, Europe, um, I can supply this Hebrew to English. The book of Jubilees, Hebrew to English, I contributed to this work as well. And then we have our scriptures, his word. And we regularly update our translations. We do not like to overwhelm people. There's been so many changes and we just like to do things in stage, in stages. So you can always expect updates from us and the lost acts of the holy apostles. Hallelujah. And the Enoch calendar. So you know how to keep the feasts. Uh, so, yeah, hallelujah. So that is everything for today. Yehoah bless you and Yehoshua be with you. And um, uh, um, just pray that you'll have a great week. And I just pray, Father, in Yehoshua's name, every accusation against the Mishpaka, against the people that are just joining in, may they be broken by your love, Hamelchizedek Yehoshua, for you are love and you are the double portion, Yah and Yehoshua. And I pray that uh, we... Uh, 
execute love according to the scriptures that we uh, be obedient to you first the first form of love obedient to your commandments and then to love one another the second commandment the greatest one uh, that we may have a double portion of blessing in our lives that everyone that in that's tuning in has a double portion of blessing in their lives Bashem Yehoshua HaMashiach Hallelujah Amen I will see you on Wednesday we'll be having a midweek teaching and then again on the Shabbat so thank you for all your support like share comment again with this post they, they mean a lot to us and it helps the word going forth from a Hebraic Nazarene perspective have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat Shalom Shalom, Shalom.